moving on to some other stuff, some actual good stuff to have on the horizon. Uh, I got a couple of shout outs, uh, shout outs for Chicago. So uh, I've got three little festivals that are premiering here, and then we're going to preview some stuff next week for some of the bigger fests that are going to be playing worldwide. Or at least you, you'll be able to get them from other places. Uh, the first one I want to give a shout out to over here is a festival that I have been going to yearly. And by that, I mean I have actually never stepped foot in it because <laughs> they do it digitally as well. Cine Youth. A bunch of, yeah, as the title says, youth, teenagers, young adults, they uh, are able to submit films for the short film festival uh, competition that they do where uh, they host it at Facets in Chicago, which is a really nice theater. But they also do it globally. Meaning that you just sign up with a free email and you can get all of the categories for free. Some of these filmmakers will end up being a future, like, who knows, Oscar winner. I have seen some mm -hmm. of these people go on to do features from a couple of years ago. Uh, but it's also just fascinating because we go to these independent festivals sponsored by Acura and A24 and all these different things. And this is true indie stuff it's it's kids who are coming out of high school college and uh, making some really creative stuff so uh if you're interested in that go give it a watch we are just got all of our cine youth emails today they usually don't run out so go sign up and support independent filmmaking for free uh over at cineyouth.com we'll add that down below the next nice. one though is a, a pretty big one because they are pretty much the official documentary chicago festival uh they reached out to me a couple years ago for the a to z show for i want to say 2018 uh pretty much what they are is they pick 10 uh 10 movies that have played at different film festivals that are documentaries that they consider the best of the best hmm. zach let me go down them with you we'll play a little yay or nay here because it's simple the lineup's only yeah, 10 movies their, it, but they added it's one. their own oscar shortlist uh, dude honestly uh and they do a great job thank you for mentioning that because uh Last year's list, you look at it and you see how many of them were in, uh, ended up getting awards. Mm. It's like you literally just need one stop shop to go to it. Plus, it also uh, takes place at the Gene Siskel Theater. And that's one of the nice. best theaters that we have here. It's a super comfy uh, art, art house. All right. They did play Girl State early. Uh, pull it up over here. They Solid. had played Girl State a as, a, as an early release. So I, I guess that's movie number 12. They're practically Doc 12 now. But you know me. I like ties. I don't mind it. Devo. I'm going to give this one a yay. This was one that premiered at South by about the band. Uh, Sundance. I didn't. Yeah, sorry. Sundance. I did yeah. not know that they had a lot more than Whippet to it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know Devo stood for de-evolution. So even if you're not a Devo fan, I think this is definitely uh, a movie for you because it really breaks down the band in a way that I, I didn't realize how much more they did outside of the band as composers mm -hmm. and as artists. So um, big thumbs up for the Devo one. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of good caught. reviews out of Sundance. It was solid. Uh, Copa 71. Yeah, we both caught, we caught that, this right? One, right? Yeah, um, this was the one where they had the Women's World Cup that, when they accidentally televised it, had the most numbers ever, which really mm -hmm. scared the men's soccer team, so they shut that bad boy down immediately. <laughs> this is them looking back at that footage, and, I mean, they cleaned it up beautifully, and they also get yeah. a lot of the uh, remaining players to talk about in interviews. Yeah, and this one premiered at TIFF last year, and it, yeah. it's interesting seeing how even contemporary women's soccer players don't really know the history of this uh, early Women's World Cup uh, that That's happened cool. before like the more recent rise in popularity of uh, women's professional soccer. And they had it in Mexico, if I'm not mistaken, right? Because they started yeah. talking about that, like the inside politics, even when they went outside of the politicking mm -hmm. for the men's, they found it again there. It's a really good doc. Copa 71. This one's actually playing at the Davis Theater, another art house theater that we have here in Chicago. Nice. Uh, this next one, I did not see, so consider this one that I have on my watch list. Superman, the Christopher Reeve story. I know yeah. this has been getting pushed out by um, the children of Christopher Reeves. Uh, they had a really big premiere at Sundance and it's supposed to be his whole story, not just as Superman, but Christopher Reeves himself. Um, so I'm excited to catch this one. Yeah, this, this one, one sold for Davis. around $15 million after its Sundance premiere, which if I'm not mistaken, is either the highest or second highest sale for a documentary out of Sundance ever. Uh, either that or Boys State. Yeah, That's so. crazy, bro. They, they must have cleared think, a lot of stuff. That's why. Yeah, I mean, I think Warner is planning a pretty aggressive awards campaign around this one. So uh, if you get a chance to see it early, yeah. you might be catching one of the Oscar shortlist oh, Warner, movies really? for. Yeah, yeah. And now you reminded me if they spent that much money, it's Superman. They're clearing a lot of stuff. This was what? One mm -hmm. of the six that we did not have links to even as press at Sundance? Yeah. Yeah, they it were keeping that under lock and key. They uh, All right. have big plans for that movie, apparently. I'm going to have to catch it then for sure. 
Uh, this next one, I think we both saw. We both gave it a pretty good recommendation. It is Porcelain War, a movie that takes yes. place in Ukraine, showcasing a bunch of artists and how they're persevering, persevering there. Absolutely. And also the way that some of the artists have been kind of enlisted into uh, the mm. fight as well. So just yeah, yeah. seeing, seeing oh, wait, the balance yeah, right. between... Actually enlisted. <laughs> like Exactly, yeah. So seeing the soldiers. balance between, like you leave your regular life and you go to fight the war for your country. I thought it did a really good job of balancing uh, the way that like people are more than just one thing, right? They, um, they, they are fighters, but they also have families. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that was a good one. I know it made our uh, top list as well. When talking about documentaries out of Sundance, they have another throwback here. This goes back to, Tribeca last year, yeah. Apollonia, Apollonia, another one where it's this woman expressing herself artistically. Um, and I forget where she was from, but that's in Poland? Uh, I f- could be wrong. I feel like it was... Uh, I think it's both Denmark, Poland. Denmark. So it's going to be one of these two for sure. Yeah. Um, and this is also her, uh, this one got shortlisted. It's about her being an artist and all of the like pushback that she gets and how she expresses herself and how she is supposed mm-hmm. to be represented as a woman. I thought it was a pretty decent watch out of Tribeca, yeah. so I would recommend this, this one. This one actually was, not out. was uh, shortlisted by the Oscars last year. Sick. It was a good one. I think we shouted this one out last year in our Tribeca coverage. So Definitely. it's like all oh, these movies, you know, stuff, it's stuff that's already got the inner cut. Uh, thumbs up. The seal of approval. Which is why I sadly got to... Sadly, I got to go to one that I think we gave it a mid. Union. <laughs> Am I wrong? Yeah. No, I mean, it's look, not it's bad. an interesting documentary, but I think we were right. both hoping for something that was a little bit less about the interpersonal politics and a little bit more about the movement towards unions, right? Yeah. They needed a union to unionize to make this a better movie because if this is going to be the thing that's going to be out for people, it needs to be something that grabs them. And and this was not what I wanted it to be. Again, this is the story of the folks who got together to make the first official union against Amazon. It would be against, right? You were joking that Amazon was going to come in and buy this movie so that nobody could ever see it. (laughs) Honestly, has it been picked up? I'm not sure. It might be Amazon, bro. What major Hollywood company wants to be pro-union right now? ridiculous but again the story is important the documentary could have been a little bit better that's where we sit with that one another watch list one it is coming from the director who did miss americana Uh, it's taylor swift's documentary now she's focusing on what are they psychics i want to say yeah psychics yeah and their interpersonal lives we've had a a couple of friends who had the chance to catch this they said it was really interesting we didn't Mm -hmm. because this was another one of those where they were not allowing links out there because they really hold the director in high regard but she's going to be there at the davis theater uh for a q a i'm still intrigued by it i i heard it's like a really good documentary that gets these like very intimate moments from them it intrigues me a little bit i I don't know how you felt coming out of the buzz from uh not too much buzz but uh out of sundance and the reviews Yeah, I mean, it seemed intriguing. It wasn't super high on my list, but like you said, we've heard from some friends who liked it, so I would definitely catch it if I had the chance, if I was at Dr. Ed. Yeah, it should be pretty good. There's also a couple of uh, shorts here. I know some of the ones that we had seen would have been the School of Canine Massage. That was one we saw when we were eating at South by. (laughs) Cute dogs. Very cute dogs. They just massage dogs. Sandcastles, though, is one that we had our eye on because they have not given this link out for our previous film festivals, and mm. it's playing here again. So I'm, I'm kind of curious on that, and I'll report back on some of the other ones right there. Uh, one that I highly recommend. It's very long, though. Right. So thank goodness it's in those comfy Gene Siskel seats. <sighs> Soundtrack to a coup de ta has some of the best editing I've seen. I'm talking about this is like... Every five seconds, there is some interesting thing that pops out on screen. This is about the musicians that were kind of used for a coup because they were willing to go the other way with their artistry, and the government did not like that during this period in time. You have very little footage. The magic that they do with this, with these artists, because I think, uh, what was the other one about the drummer that we saw at South by last year? Ooh. Um, for Max shoot. Roach? Like, Max Roach has more audio than visual. So when they made his documentary, that was magic, too. It's like, how did you build stuff? The drum also waltzes. Thank you. A drum also waltzes. What they do for Soundtrack to Coup d'etat is an achievement in editing, bro. Like, just for that alone, I think it's worth the watch. But the story is super intriguing. It's, uh, I think, over two hours. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. Two and a half, I believe. Yeah. 
<sighs> okay. Um, I, I had the chance to see it through a screener, and I very much enjoyed it. Um, but with that in mind, please keep it on your radar, at least by the end of the year, because this, this is a standout documentary right here. Soundtrack nice. to a coup d'etat. See how they use artists uh, when it comes to politics. Speaking of, you had really good things to say about this one, War Game, another one that was playing at Sundance, but only in person, um, coming from the, the people who did uh, Boy State, right? Yeah, uh, well, so it's one half of the Boy State one directors, half. not Amanda McBain, but Jesse Moss is uh, co-directing this one. Uh, and it's a really interesting look at sort of like a hypothetical response to a insurrection style event. Basically a bunch of uh, people in and around Washington politics took a look at the events of uh, January 6th and decide and thought, well, what is the worst case scenario and are we prepared for it? And can we run our own simulation to try and prepare for it? So it's like this, like almost D and D style, like, uh, Hypo, like imaginary game, but where people are taking it seriously, Turn but play based. set against the backdrop of of a <laughs> of a uh, you know hypothetical U.S. revolution. It feels very in vogue, given that Civil War is the number one movie in theaters right now. Like this is basically the Still, uh, yeah, the yeah, practice yeah. run for the Civil War. Uh, but Damn, yeah, the I mean, behind the scenes you, version. Exactly. If you if you enjoyed Alex Garland's movie, I think you'll get a lot out of War Game. Uh, how would you compare it to something like Riotsville that we also saw from Sundance a couple of years back? Compared to Riotsville, Riotsville is using a lot of archival footage and it's sort of mining history. And while a lot of that history is relevant today, War Game is looking more so at a problem of the maybe near future. It's a little bit the way that it's forward looking, but still very much a present problem. Maybe fe- makes it feel a little bit more fraught, mm. a little bit more dangerous than than Riotsville did and Riotsville also has this very kind of like um almost like um I don't know this VHS aesthetic to it where it's yeah. a little bit slow it the narr- the uh way that it delivers information is a little bit uh more gingerly whereas war game is trying to feel like a thriller okay uh because to me you saying that it comes from the the people who did um boy state and girl state is it like adult state (laughs) kind of yeah it it is a little bit like adult state i think it's a a great call okay uh so i'm curious for this because they even have like a like a fake president and stuff like that really so is it is it any people who are actually involved yeah so like who would be involved in the war game well, so Steve Bullock, who is in that description there, he was the former governor of Mount Montana. So he's somebody who, like, has been in seats of government, has an idea of how uh, these levers of power work. And he, for the simulation, is playing the fictional president of the United States. So all the people that are hired here are former politicians, former lobbyists, former military vets. Like, they they have former military vets in charge of the... Um, of the, uh, what would you call like the insurrectionists, like the mm-hmm. the rebel forces, right? So you have people who have a, an idea for, 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 for military campaigns can, you know, trying to dismantle the, uh, the you know, the government's power. I don't know. It, it's pretty, it's interesting. pretty interesting. I sometimes wish they um, made it a little bit more visual and instead of just sort of listening to the different people uh, responding, but it is a fascinating exercise for sure. Pretty good. All right. Uh, keep your eye out for this. It's going to be premiering or showcasing for the closing night film on May 5th. And if you're an enemy of the state, do not watch uh, how we are planning <laughs> to stop you in this movie. Yeah. The last one. Daughters. Probably our number oh, one man. movie out of the festival. Probably yeah. one of the best documentaries of the year. I don't yeah. think it's changing. No. It's going to come out on Netflix. And the best thing I could say about, right, it's Netflix. I want to make sure I'm not mistaken. Yes, here. Netflix. And at least everyone's going to have the chance to see it. This should be seen in theaters. This should be seen by as many people as possible. But uh, it should just be seen in general before the end of the year, before anyone makes a list. This is one of the most heart-touching movies of the year. This was actually one of the ones I, it was the last thing I saw. What, Midnight had that screener open. The last thing to see. The mm-hmm. festival is over. 
and I had to record something extra for intercut saying, nah, I, I, I forgot to add daughters. I have to add daughters. Um, that's how yeah. good this movie is. I think Zach also had it uh, well up there for his best docs. I think number one yeah, also. Yeah, we... We it's, we had even good. brought this we had even brought this up during our Sundance Film Festival preview, uh, just because the premise alone I think is intriguing. The idea of this daddy daughter dance with the daughters of incarcerated fathers getting a chance to spend time with and in a somewhat normalized setting, uh, their fathers who are behind bars who they don't often have uh, that type of interaction with. You know, it, it, I think a premise like that promises a really interesting documentary, but even so, it still kind of blew my expectations away. The, the depth Very of good. the empathy on display in this movie, the way that it's handled and the, the time they really put in, I, I thought it was incredibly, incredibly powerful. So thank you, Joel Edgerton, for executive producing this documentary. Yeah, We've been waiting Our, on you, man. Australia's it, yeah. gift to America. Let's go. Now, this is fantastic. There's a couple of other shorts that uh, once it rolls out that I'll be bringing up as like a, a good compliment to the movie as well um, to give you even, an even bigger picture. But this is this is the epitome of documentary filmmaking, in my opinion. Please, yeah. please, yeah. please check that out. So yeah. uh, pretty going confident back it's going to it, be a, a Oscar contender this year. Right? Oh, yeah. easily. Easily. Uh, so again, that's the 2024 lineup, a Doc 10 plus one, technically two, because you can see Girl State over on Apple TV Plus, but those nice. are going to be showing here in Chicago at the Gene Davis or the Gene Sisko and the Davis Theater. And if you needed a, a refresher of what it was like last year, I mean, just look at how jam packed it is. Lil Richard was a standout. We really liked King Cole, even made one of our cuts towards the end. Still, mm -hmm. Michael J. Fox was top five for us. Going to Mars was was in our top as well. The disappearance of Sheer High was good. Subject Very is good. actually the only one I'm missing. It's, it's the one I'm missing. Mm -hmm. Confessions was was interesting. She gave her, I don't know if you remember that, she gave a, an organ. And she's yeah. like, why isn't everyone giving organs? Um, a still small voice. I think we might have liked that one. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit? A little bit. A little we might, bit. We might have given it an intercut award, maybe. So, for best documentary. Probably like number one or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and then their shorts programs were pretty good. Going Bar City uh, Mariachi was decent. And I think Under the Sky of Damascus might be the second one that I'm missing there. Nice. But it, it is always a solid lineup. You can see all their previous ones as well. Just just bangers after bangers after bangers. Uh, so shout out Doc10. Keep an eye out for the films cool. that are there.